Hello guys, a very good day, good morning or good evening. So this is Dr. Transit, your pathology educated and academy. So we are going to discuss, we are discussing the NEET PG 2021 questions and this is the 18th question we are going to discuss. It is an uh, like an integrated one between ophthalmology and your pathology, right? So I'm just obviously I'm going to take the pathology aspect. Of the ophthalmology will be taken by the ophthalmology educator obviously, fine. A young child presents to the OPD for evaluation and was found to have a white reflex in the eye, fine. White reflex in the eye, most of the time, I'm sure that you must have made up your mind for a diagnosis. But I do have a very a classical way to prove it in the form of biopsy. I assume that it should be a post-surgical biopsy because I cannot take a biopsy of this lesion. It should be post-surgical. If there is any history of the post-surgery, do comment below in the comment section. I might change it and tell you the best possible recall question. Fine. Uh, histopathology was done. Let's assume like that. And the lesion had small round blue cell tumor with flex nerve intestine and rosettes. Which of the following is your diagnosis? We did read about the patterns of neoplasia. If you have time, you can go through my YouTube channel or in the Anacademy app where we have discussed about patterns of neoplasia. Patterns of neoplasia is the best way for you to recollect every cancer. Right? So all these small round blue cell tumors, one of the common thing is they are blastomas. Right? Most of them end with blastomas. We do have an exception. That exception also came in MCQ. Your glioblastoma and hemangioblastomas, these are common blastomas which might not have a small round blue cell tumor, right? I'll just write exceptions. Your glioblastoma and hemangioblastoma will not have small round blue cell tumors. Almost every other blastoma will have small round blue cell tumor. With that itself, I can narrow down these two. It's gone. As you have a young child, I have only two possibilities, right? Medulloblastoma, unlikely to happen in the eye. So I can rule out that as well. It's a very, very simple answer. It's going to be a retinoblastoma, obviously. There's no doubt in that. So we'll go ahead and take time and discuss about these rosettes because rosettes are important point which is going to help me in diagnostic part at, at the various uh, various tumors not only your retinoblastoma right so all the blastomas irrespective of it will have rosette formation see rosette is nothing but this right this is how a rosette is going to do rosette is nothing but a shape arranged like a flower these are small round blue cells which can have an arrangement of a flower that's possible and i'm going to name it a rosette we do have three classical rosettes and uh, one thing just to fill up thing we call it in uh, the fourth rosette is called in perivascular pseudo rosette. So I know what is the rosette and we have to say how do I call something as in true rosette and how do I call something as in pseudo rosette because I'm sure you must have read about pseudo rosettes and true rosette. When I'm going to use the term true rosette is if I'm going to have a lumen in the center of the flower right or in just an empty space empty space is what technically I'm going to call it a lumen right if I have a lumen or an empty space in the center of the rosette I'm going to name it a true rosette whatever it might be if there is no lumen okay no empty space or no lumen I'm going to call the rosette a pseudo rosette right this is the basics of classification of a rosette into true and a pseudo rosette right now I'll go and look at the individual type of rosettes so the first rosette what I'm going to look here is your I'll look draw the rosette then we'll uh, see how to name the rosette fine the first rosette it's going to look like this. I'm going to have these small round blue cells like this. Fine. In the form of a circle or like a flower. The thing here in the center, I'm not having an empty space or I'm not having a lumen. What I'm going to have in the center is a pink color structure. Right. I have a pink color structure in the center surrounded by these two muscles. Right. So this pink color structure, I don't have a lumen. I have a pink color structure. I'm going to call this an neuropil material. This is a neuropil material. So first question for you is, I don't have an empty space here. So what do I call them? True or pseudo? It is undoubtedly pseudo rosettes, right? We'll come to it right later. So when I have a pink color thing in the center, I'm going to name this rosette an Homer right rosettes. Fine. I'm going to call it an Homer right rosettes. So it's neuropil. So I'm right in saying that it should have the tumors where I'm going to see this Homer right rosettes should have something in relation with neural origin, right? Obviously. So there are two tumors where I'm going to commonly see in this a new Homer right rosettes or Homer right pseudo rosettes. It's your neuroblastoma and your medulloblastoma, right? These are two tumors where I'm going to commonly see your Homer right rosettes. When you read Robbins, it must have given in one place Homer right rosettes. In another place, they would have termed it as Homer right pseudo rosettes. Ultimately, both are being the same, right? I call it Homer right rosette or pseudo rosette. It is a pseudo rosette because it doesn't have a lumen or an empty space. Perfect. So second rosette. So second rosette, again, we're going to draw the same thing, how they're going to look and we'll name it and we'll see how it's, how, which tumor we'll see it, right? Same, uh, blue, small round blue cells. It's very dark blue, right? Next time I'll use a light blue, fine. The difference here between this rosette and your 
uh, Homer retrocitus. Here I do have an empty space in the center, but these cells which are surrounding them will have cytoplasmic extensions which are pink in color. And almost every cytoplasm will be pink in color, right? So I do have cytoplasmic extension which is narrowing or converging to the lumen, right? So what I'm going to see in this rosettes, I'm going to have three structures here. The first one obviously is the tumor cell in the surrounding part. I'm just writing T for it. And I do have the pink color. The pink color is your cytoplasmic extensions of the tumor cells. The cytoplasm will extend of the tumor cells. And in the center, I do have an empty lumen. So my first question here, is this a true rosette or a pseudo rosette? Undoubtedly, this is a true rosette, right? So if you have an appearance like this, I'm going to call this rosette as flexner Winterstein rosettes, fine? When I have a flexner Winterstein rosettes, I'm sure your diagnosis, that's what our question was based on, right? Flexner Winterstein rosettes, my diagnosis is going to be retinoblastoma, fine? I'm going to think of retinoblastoma, okay? Both congenital, acquired, wherever it is, if it's retinoblastoma, I'm going to have this appearance, this I'm going to call it an flexner Winterstein rosettes, fine? We do have two more rosettes. We'll just have a look at those rosettes as well, right? The third rosette, what I'm going to draw here, okay, we'll use the same concept. We'll draw the uh, cells first and we'll see what is there in the center of the cells, right? I'm going to have perfect cells. Yeah, this blue looks better, right? We have cells surrounding them, forming a rosette. And here, I won't have anything. I'll just have a lumen, which means my cells are going to be like this. If my cytoplasm of the cells are like this, this looks like a perfect flower, right? And as we said that we have a perfect lumen in the center. I don't have any extensions or anything. So can, am I right in saying that this is also a true rosette? Undoubtedly, right? So this is definitely a true rosette and we call it a true ependymal rosettes. Okay. You have true ependymal rosettes. As the name says, it is true. And it's also seen in ependymoma, fine. It's seen in ependymoma whatever type of ependymoma is, I will have a true ependymal rosis, which will have nothing, a lumen surrounded by tumor cells. The cytoplasm of the tumor cells might look a little bit big, that's completely fine, right? There's a third rosette, and the fourth rosette is a bit different, right? It's not actually a rosette. Why I'm saying it's not actually a rosette is, here is not the tumor cells. The tumor cells surrounding the vasculature is a thing here. So I'm going to name this in perivascular. It's a va vessel. So I'm just definitely it's in pseudo rosette. Okay. It's like a perivascular arrangement, that's all. So that I'm naming it as a rosette here, right? I'll have a vessel in the center. It can be anywhere, right? It can be in many, many places. I'm going to have a blood vessel in the center. Surrounding the blood vessel, what I'm going to see is I'm going to see lots and lots of your tumor cells, right? I'll see tumor cells here surrounding these blood vessels. It can be regular, it can be irregular, whatever it is. I would just like to mention this is a perivascular condensation of tumor cells, that's all. So this I'm going to call it a perivascular pseudo rosette. It is a non-specific diagnosis. Why I'm calling it non-specific diagnosis? The other ones, okay, ependymoma, I'll have this. It, I can come to one possible diagnosis. Here the problem is, it can be seen in many, many tumors. It can be seen in neuroblastoma. I can have it. It can be seen in medulloblastoma. It can be seen in ependymoma. So all these rosettes, whatever you see, all most of the small bundle vessel tumor, I can have this. It can be seen in Ewing sarcoma. Fine. It can be seen in almost every small round blue cell tumor, which means it's, uh, the small round blue cells is having a perivascular condensation, that's all. Now it's very, very non-specific. I'm not going to use it for diagnostic purpose, fine? So these are the four different types of rosettes. Let's have a look at the microscopy real-time images and see if we, it's possible for us to differentiate and diagnose them. The only thing which might become difficult for us in rosettes is the way to diagnose it, okay? Uh, fine. So this is the problem. I have a biopsy here. When you look at the biopsy, it's difficult for me to identify where the hell is rosettes, right? So that becomes first important difficult for me here. So I'll just circle it. Now it becomes easy. So I have to circle it. Then you can say, okay, I'm having a pink structure in the center. Surrounding that, I'm having the cells con condensed. So I don't have a lumen. This is your homo right rosette, right? The only thing is, it'll be difficult for you to pick up a rosette. Unless you're trained, frequently used to see the images, it'll be difficult. So I would say that, go this tree. A kid. Retinoblastoma. So automatically in microscopy, I have to see flexner intestinal. Even if you have the image, I don't want you to go with the image, look at the microscopy. If a weird examiner comes and gives you only the image, that might be difficult and we are preparing you for that as well, fine? Second thing, the second rosette, what I'm going to see here, look at this rosette, right? Again, I'm just going to draw whatever we said, right? I'll draw this. This is the entire rosette here. You can see the rosette. You do have tumor cells here. 
and if you look carefully you have a center lumen as well right you have a lumen and between the tumor cells and lumen you have the pink structure so whatever we draw is perfect a tumor cell lining the cytoplasmic extension of the tumor cell and i have a center lumen that's how your flex nerve intestinal rosette will look right that's how a classical flex nerve intestinal rosette looks and your in your senior retinoblastoma that was a question here it didn't have an image even if you have an image it's easy for you to pick up fine the next one here look at this thing Okay, I'll just draw the thing. I'll use maybe a black color for us to better highlight it. So here, there's a tumor cell. There's a tumor cell. Tumor cell. Tumor cell. Tumor cell. I'm just drawing the outline of the tumor cell. And center, I have perfect lumen. This is the one which exactly looks like a rosette, right? This exactly looks like a flower, right? So this, I'm going to call it a true ependymal rosette. This exactly looks like a rosette, and it's seen in ependymoma. Ependymoma can have true rosettes. As well as your perivascular sclerosis, your false rosettes as well. The same thing goes for almost every tumor, right? The last rosette, just for name's sake, we are just filling it up. This is how the last rosette looks. This is a vas vessel in the center. You can see definitely see the vessel in the center. Fine. So surrounding that, I don't have a, like an. I, I'm not saying that it should always be present here. It's present here also is okay for me. It's a vessel surrounding that I have aggregations of cells. Why I said this is very non specific is am I right in saying that every tumor? be it small round cell or non-small round cell will they have vessels yes so if it is small round cell tumor will the tumor cells be surrounding the vessel obviously and i'm going to name it in pseudo rosette right this is a perivascular pseudo rosette it's a completely completely non-specific finding they may be just used to fill the pages that's all it has, doesn't have any diagnostic uh, purposes that's what i'm saying right okay so we did see a question and we did see about the different different types of process it should be easy for you to pick up maybe in telegram groups randomly i'll use these uh, images are images which came in the hospital not the same images so you get used to it that's all when you see real-time cases it'll be easy for you to you have to apply it but apply it okay think like a pathologist and think, pick it like a pathologist so even if you have a difficult question you can easily crack it i'm not saying extremely difficult syndromes the same image the same diagnosis different images so you get used to it you can pick up any thing which comes in your exam fine okay let's see uh thank you for your time and do download the n academy app we have innocent uh, recall going on innocent discussion going on which will be having till november 14th daily at 10 pm we'll be discussing 2025 20, real-time cases some few of the real-time cases and few things how i'm going to approach the case because with neat pg and the next pg approach becomes more important than the subject right so we'll try to approach think like a person consultant and we are going to crack the exam like a consultant fine if you have any doubts in the recall, do comment below. So if there is anything which is going to drastically change the diagnosis, we'll definitely look at, look at it again. Fine. Thank you for your time. Do like and subscribe the, uh, to the channel. And more and more free content is there for you, which might help you in your exam preparation. Thank you. See you soon in another video. Till then, bye-bye from Dr. Anjit.